Captain's Log Supplemental. It's been nearly 20 years since this outside group of powers known as the United Federation of Planets interfered in our quadrant. Although they did us a favor of destroying our immediate threat, the Borg, they opened the door for the even greater power that's been besieging us ever since. I don't know who this extra enemy is, I've never seen their faces, but this Federation is responsible for the deaths of millions and millions of our people. I swear, I will find this Federation and I will avenge the deaths of all those from my people upon them tenfold. What's up guys and welcome to our second installment of our What If Scenario series. What's up guys, Captain Blade J52 here with the second installment of our What If Scenario series and the second installment of our Star Trek timeline What If Scenarios. Now, we kind of set ourselves up for today's video in the very first episode that we did when we examined what would have happened had Captain Picard been killed in the TNG episode The Best of Both Worlds after being assimilated and wasn't able to be saved by the Enterprise D crew. Now in that video we examined some of the possible changes to the timeline that could have occurred and we kind of set ourselves up for this one by touching base on it a little bit however we didn't really get into it that much. Now I didn't want to get into this particular scenario that much in our first video because it would have taken up way too much time and I honestly felt like it deserved its own video. Now I think I should go ahead and say at this particular point in time that today's what if scenario is purely my own interpretation of what I believe would happen and as such it's not cemented into the timeline as part of the canon but it's purely my own interpretation and opinions of what I believe would happen in the given situation. Now today's scenario that we're going to be doing is what would have happened had the Enterprise D crew sent the program back with Hugh in the episode I Borg to wipe out the collective. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed the little intro speech that I did at the start as a Delta Quadrant native living sometime after the events of today's scenario takes place. And I hope as well it gave you a little bit of a preview as to where we're actually going to be going with today's scenario. Now, for today's scenario, we're actually going to begin our story on the Enterprise D bridge itself or in the conference room with the crew of the Enterprise D discussing the outcome of what they're going to do with Hugh, just as they did in the original episode I Borg. Now, in the original episode of I Borg, they were discussing what they wanted to do with Hugh. Now, do they send him back to the Collective with this program to wipe them all out, or do they not? And if they do this, are they really any better than the Borg themselves that they've been fighting? Now, by this point in time, the Collective had destroyed billions, perhaps even trillions of lives. And yet, here the Federation is, who claims to be so peaceful, considering wiping out an entire race of people. And if they do this, are they really better than their enemy? Are they really better than the thing they've been fighting? And this raises even bigger concerns. If they wipe out the Borg, what could this possibly mean? Could this perhaps open the door to a major threat down the road? Or would the galaxy be better off for it? Now... I believe for today's scenario that in this instance the Enterprise D crew would of course have made the choice that the benefits to the galaxy and everything outweigh the moral dilemmas and any possible risk that there could be by wiping out the collective. So for today's scenario we're going to assume they decide to go through with it and they send the program back with Hugh. Now at this particular point in time I believe everything would play out pretty much the same way that it did until you get to the point in the timeline of the episode Descent. Now in this episode Descent the Enterprise D crew faces off against the Borg once again except this time Data's brother Lore had returned commanding this faction of the Borg. Now this is also the second time we encounter the Borg drone known as Hugh. And we see some of the outcomes of the first episode, I Borg, that we mentioned earlier. Now, in this episode, Hugh remarks at some of the consequences of the Enterprise, D, or the Enterprise D's actions. And he remarks about how on some of the Borg vessels, the flow of voices became uneven. 
as they assimilated this idea of individuality. The voices would become uneven, one group wanted to do one thing, one group wanted to do another, and he remarked about how some vessels self-destructed, some vessels even ceased to function outright. So it was essentially a gut punch to the collective, and threw them into chaos. Now, I believe that the destruction would be a lot more widespread at this point, more so than it was in the original episode of Descent, and we would start seeing the destruction take a much faster pace after the episode of Descent would take place. Now, the reason I say this is because now the Collective would be dealing with not just Hugh's individuality, but the second gun, uh, gut punch of the program designed to wipe them out. Now, I believe at this particular point in time that you would see a lot more factions starting to break off, similar to what happened in the episode Descent, except on a much more widespread scale. You would see remnants of the Collective still be active, you would see some Borg drones newly freed, that form a faction similar to the Borg Cooperative in Star Trek Online that just want to live their lives in peace. You would see some Borg drones try to go on a conquering spree because maybe they were assimilated Kazon, or maybe they're some other very warlike species, or something along those lines. Whatever their motivations would be, I believe this would throw the Collective into a civil war. Now, as far as to how this would change the Delta Quadrant and the galaxy as a whole, I believe, as well, once the Collective plunged into a civil war, that this would also plunge the Delta Quadrant as a whole into a civil war. You would have the many species of the Delta Quadrant uniting together to try to wipe out the Borg, which would include the new Borg Cooperative faction of drones such as Hugh and others. Now, I also believe that once the Borg were wiped out, or considered to be wiped out, that the Delta Quadrant as a whole would still be at war with each other. You'd have some species looking to reclaim territory they had lost to the Borg many years before. You would have some species like the Kazon looking to expand their territory. And you would have as well some species perhaps that would even try to steal what was left of Borg technology for their own purposes. Whatever their reasons, I believe that this would plunge the Delta Quadrant into war for several decades at the very least, at least a good 20 years or more. Now, although, yes, the Federation would have done the Galaxy a service by wiping out the Collective, at the same time they would have plunged the Delta Quadrant into war. Now, I believe as well that the Delta Quadrant would have also had to deal with the threat of the Undine, or Species 8472 as they're called. Now, the Undine is the name given to them in the Star Trek Online game. Now, I believe something similar to what happened in STO would happen here, in this particular instance. I believe at this point in time that the Borg would have already picked their or picked the fight with Species 8472 and would have been getting their butt royally handed to them. Now we see the only way that the Borg were even able to survive the onslaughts of Species 8472 and drive them back were by the combined efforts of Species 8, for, or not Species 8472, but the combined efforts of Voyager and the Borg themselves. And speaking of Voyager, I also believe this would change quite a few things in the Voyager timeline. Since now the Borg were wiped out early on in this instance, Voyager would have had to have found another way to return home, since now they don't have the gate that they used, or the Transwarp Gateway Network that they used in the final episode, of Voyager. Now I believe as well in this particular instance since the Borg were wiped out that the Borg never would have met Annika Hansen or the person we now know as Seven of Nine. I believe in this instance that Seven of Nine would have been freed and served as a leading member of the cooperative similar to the drone known as Hugh. Now since Voyager didn't have the benefit of Seven of Nine's expertise I believe in this particular instance that the outcome would be quite different. Now they wouldn't have the Borg nanoprobes to work with and Voyager would be in danger of being overrun. However, I believe at this point in time that Voyager would have also had the benefit of the cooperative on down the road as well as a few other Delta Quadrant species that are now fighting against the Undine. So I do believe that at some point the technologies we saw them deploy such as the nanite uh, torpedoes would still come into play, but just at a much, much later date than they originally did. 
Now what I believe would happen in this point in time is that in Voyager's case, by some people they would be hailed as heroes, but others they would be reviled as villains. As the old saying goes, nature abhors a vacuum and the destruction of the Borg Collective would have left a major power vacuum that people were looking to fill. Now I believe at this point in time that Voyager would have been able to also play that card to their advantage, especially with the new cooperative faction saying, you know, hey, we're from the Federation, we're the guys that got you all your freedom by sending that program to wipe out the Collective. Now I believe as well by others, as I was saying, they would be reviled as villains. Some of the species affected by the ongoing war in the Delta Quadrant would hate Voyager as well because not only did they, yes, destroy the Borg, but they kept their Quadrant at war, potentially killing even more people than the Collective had. So it raises the question, was it really worth it? But we'll get to that in just a minute. Now, the other big thing that I believe would happen is Species 8472 themselves. I believe, at least for a time, they would be the new major threat to deal with in the galaxy, just as they were initially in some of the episodes of Voyager, where they made the statement that they, uh, that they were going to wipe out all life in the galaxy. Now, I do believe that Voyager, being from the Federation, would also have that card to play in their favor with the Undine. Now we see in one episode of Voyager, they come across a Terra Dome or a Biodome that was essentially a recreation of Starfleet Academy that several of them were using as a training grounds to infiltrate the Federation. Now we did see in that episode that at least some of Species 8472 can be reasoned with and negotiated with. Although they are extremely xenophobic and very isolationist, they most definitely in that episode showed that they do have the capacity to reason at least. Now I believe in that uh, case that Voyager would have eventually reached out to Species 8472 and I believe that some of them at least would have been willing to listen. Voyager would have told them, you know, hey, we're the ones that destroyed the Borg, you know, and I do believe that they could have reached at least some... What's the word I'm looking for? at least reach some bit of a peaceful conclusion, for lack of a better way of describing it coming to mind. Or at least reached a truce, that's the word I was looking for. Now, I believe once Species 8472 stood down, that an even greater threat than them would present itself. Now, I believe we would see something like what happens in Star Trek Online happening here in this scenario, where the Iconians would present themselves as the major threat. Now, because of their earlier experiences in negotiating a truce, uh, a truce with Species 8472, I believe that this time around, that when they went to attack the Federation and everybody again, after being played by the Iconians, I believe that they would have been able to sit 8472 down again and say, hey, look, that's not our ships and everything, you know, we're not the ones that attacked you in fluidic space, but these guys, the Iconians, are. Now, I believe at this point that Species 8472 would have been obviously very enraged, because not only were they baited into attacking another group of people, but they also had another group of people invading their realm. Now, I believe in this instance we would see a much different situation play out with the Iconian War than what Star Trek Online had. Now, in the Star Trek Online game, we see the various powers of the Milky Way galaxy do indeed come together to fight back against the Iconians. We see that the only reason that it succeeds is that in one of the missions you go back in time to try to wipe them out during the original bombardment of their home world, but you instead help them out and return to the future with a crystal known as the World Heart that contains all of the lost knowledge of their civilization. Now. I do believe that with Species 8472 being the wild card, that it never would have gotten to that point. I believe in this instance that the combined powers of the Milky Way galaxy would propose a temporary alliance with Species 8472. And I do believe in this point in time, since Voyager and the Federation do have that card to play in their favor of wiping out the Borg, that Species 8472 would at least temporarily long enough to repel the Iconian invasion work with the various powers of the Milky Way galaxy. 
Now with Species 8472 entering the war on the side of the Alpha Quadrant powers and the Milky Way galaxy, this raises a very different question. How would the Undine bioships play into this? How would their technology stack up against the Iconians? And how would their ability to move across fluidic space stack up? Now I believe that we would see a very, very different outcome to a lot of the battles, unlike what we saw in Star Trek Online. Now, with Species 8472 joining the war on the side of the Milky Way Galaxy powers, you would essentially see the benefits gained by the Iconian gateways nullified by the ability to move through fluidic space. Now, although Species 8472 is, yes, very xenophobic and very isolationist, they're no fools. And by working with the Federation, at least temporarily, they would recognize that, you know, hey, we can move through fluidic space, you know, why don't we move our allied fleets through fluidic space and we can come out over here. So if the Iconians decided, oh, well, we're attacking Earth at the moment, so let's go attack Kronos now, well, it wouldn't really do them any good if they tried to move a gateway over there. Because Species 8472 and some of the Milky Way powers could just open their own portal, travel through fluidic space, and then be right there to meet them head-on yet again. Now, I believe that, yes, it would be a very bloody battle, but with Species 8472 entering the mix on the side of the Milky Way powers, that the Iconians eventually would have been beaten back and repelled. So, anyways, as far as the future goes in that case, I believe that perhaps once the Iconians were beaten back and everything, that once the final Allied ships pulled out of fluidic space for the last time, that Species 8472 would pretty much retreat to their own space yet again for at least a little while. Perhaps in the future, the Undine and the various powers of the Milky Way galaxy would perhaps strike up conversations. But at least for a time, Species 8472 would want to be left alone. But anyways, that's what I see happening or happening in this particular scenario and some of the outcomes I see from the Borg being wiped out. Although, yes, it would be a great benefit to the galaxy, I believe it would open up, in the long run, the potential for an even greater foe to present themselves, and perhaps not be as great as the Federation is thinking that it would be. But, anyways, folks, that concludes today's scenario. Let me know in the comments section down below what you think of today's scenario. Do you see a situation similar to this playing out? Do you see something completely different happening? Or do you think that um, I'm completely off base with this? What do you think would happen in a situation like this? Kind of curious to hear from you guys on this one. Now, if you have ideas for any future what-if scenarios that you're wanting to get into or for a future video, again, please let me know down below and say, you know, hey, why don't you consider this scenario from Star Trek or this one from Star Wars or Dragon Ball Z or perhaps even the Power Rangers in the future as we look, in, as we look into branching into various other series. But anyways, folks, for now, this is Captain Blade J52 signing off.